Well, traders, as you can see here, I'm having a red day. I'm still going for the week, nicely going for the week, but uh, well, this Friday is red. I had an amazing trade today with ZM, which I'm going to talk uh, shortly about right now. A loser in Facebook, two losers in Tesla, second one after adding quantity. That's why I have such a big loser in Tesla that is, uh, let's call it two and a half trades and a very nice winner in Beyond. But uh, the end result, mainly to Tesla, is I'm down $14,000. I was kind of playing around. I mean, if Tesla would have finished in green, that would have been nice for me, but uh, that just didn't happen. My second trade took me down and I'm gonna finish in red. Now, the thing I wanna talk about today is, uh, actually I wanna talk about two things. Uh, one of them is ZM. ZM was on my long list. If you watched my pre-market uh, post, you would have seen that uh, ZM was initially on my long list. And that's mainly to the fact that it started with a green gap up. So I was expecting it to move higher, although it came down initially. And that's for two reasons. One is the fact that it started with a gap up. I saw that pre-market time, of course, and the daily. Now take a look at the daily here. Recently, ZM spiked up dramatically. And then it came down, did not really close the gap, but it was quite close to that. It was under a lot of pressure, probably profit taking or whatever, then moved higher. When you have such a big move up, you also have a lot of short sellers. We enjoyed shorting ZM when that time, uh, when, when it was at these times, I mean, when, when we had some short trades there. And anyway, ZM came down and once it started moving higher, that's a huge short squeeze. I mean, the real short squeeze would happen if it moves over the highs, but as, as it starts moving higher, it, um, it creates a bit of a short squeeze and uh, look at what happened today. It came down, continued ca coming down. And at that point, you can take a look at uh, the S&P. We were here, right over here. That's my second, uh, the second thing I want to talk about today, because, well, first, we could have expected the pullback from these lows. I'm going to talk about it soon. But when ZM touched the lows and started moving up with the S&P 500 moving up as well, uh, it had a big move. And the reason it may had a big move is mainly because of the daily. I don't know if it's just short squeeze, short squeeze or just the daily, which looks very nice for long or whatever. But the, the end result was ZM spiked up like crazy and we had a fantastic gym. Look at that. Um, I've got $38,000 winner in ZM and I also added, so that was a trade uh, which worked very, very well. Now, uh, watching the S&P 500 is extremely important in five minute candles and it's extremely important to watch a few days of the S&P 500. I would say the minimum you should be watching is three days. In fact, you should be watching a little bit more than I'm showing you right now. Although uh, some of the data that comes in like uh, from the previous day is not very important for us today. You can see that yesterday's behavior was extremely important. Now, if you take a look at yesterday's, let me highlight that a little bit you can see that the S&P had a big support area right at this level over here. Uh, that's the SPY here, that's a 333 mark. As you can see, we started down, moved up, came down, supported for the first time, uh, second time, and then finished a little bit higher. And once we came down today, we could have expected a pullback at this level. And again, we talked about it, and we did get a very nice pullback at, that, at, at this level. Now. If we're coming down now again and seems like we're trying to do so, then I'm not sure this level is going to stop us. But for the first time, that was the pullback. That's when ZM reacted to that move. Now, of course, ZM is coming down now with the market as well. So it's no longer holding. And, um, and again, the S&P, I wonder if it's going to come down or not. I'm still not sure about that because it is a Friday. And on Fridays, we don't usually have big moves. Uh, well, the, the sign of that move would be the Nasdaq, which already did move down. But if you take a look at the Nasdaq, here it is. You can see that the Nasdaq also have quite a bit of support here from yesterday's lows. So Nasdaq is not yet there and could have the support there. Will the S&P move under the lows? I don't know. But uh, the first pullback could have been expected. Uh, second one, maybe because it's a Friday, it's not going to come down. I don't know. Anyway, uh, Tesla did not hold. It came down with the market. My second trade was a loser. 
and that's why I'm going to finish in red today. And that happens. It's part of the trading life. Uh, we can succeed at all times. My average in uh, for me is uh, approximately one and a half losing day per week. So this should be one of them. Traders, thank you very much for joining. If you're on YouTube, if you'd like to give us a thumb up, you would like that very much. It will help our channel. Um, just want to wish you all a great weekend. Just enjoy your weekend. And uh, uh, if you are, um, um, I mean, for the, for, for, for the Jews in, in, in our community, I'm one of them. We have a Rosh Hashanah today, which is uh, the new year. So that would be... Um, um, that would be the time where a lot of people would be with their families. So happy Rosh Hashanah for all of you. Uh, and uh, thank you all for joining again and have a great weekend. And I'll see you all next week. Thank you, guys. Thank you for watching our video. Before you go, we invite you to take Traders free welcome course. It was designed to teach you the basics of Wall Street trading. Click here to sign up for this no-risk, no-cost offer. If you like this video, please subscribe to our YouTube channel where you can view many more stock trading videos. Questions or comments, please submit them below.